What's up, world? My name is John Hope. I'm an artist based out of Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm my mother's son, Hope's father, and I'm here to give the world some inspiration and, more importantly, just that, hope. I think the biggest takeaway from my career is um, resilience. You know, I'm, I'm somebody that had a lot of different trials and tribulations throughout my career, a lot of, a lot of barriers. Um, and I didn't really rest and rely on other people to get out of those barriers. Um, I think earlier on, I thought that I had to get, you know, validation or I needed assistance or support from other people. And it's okay to have a team, you know what I mean? But sometimes people might not see your vision. And so for me, I had to really tap into myself and um, be resourceful from within to create opportunities for myself, you know, self-manage and, you know, um, build my own tour. You know, I did, I, I put out my own albums independently. And so for me, I think about the resilience piece um, as somebody who, you know, whatever the circumstance was, um, I didn't let that deter me from, you know, reaching my goal, which is getting the music, getting the content out to the people. Man, fatherhood, man. I think, um, man, I love it. I love it, you know. My daughter has been such a, an, a, a big inspiration to me, you know. She's been someone that has taught me a lot about myself, um, has taught me to be selfless, has taught me to have like a beginner's mind, you know. As much as I'm the father, you know what I'm saying, like I'm, I'm learning from her. I started thinking about legacy more and like, what am I leaving for her? You know, how is she gonna, you know, receive me? You know, right now it's very, you know, she's, she's, she's just a toddler, man. You know what I mean? And she's, she's um, you know, she's consuming the world in real time in a, in, in a way that only she knows. And so the only way I can do that is just be open about, you know, some, you know my flaws, you know, um, the things that I'm not proud of, you know, as well as my successes, you know what I mean? I, I, I think the, the authenticity in our relationship is what is going to strengthen us, you know what I mean? Daddy wasn't, d daddy didn't have all the answers. Daddy isn't, wasn't the best in this situation, but you can learn from, from me and you can learn from how I was able to, you know, um, just grow and develop, you know? And so... Um, each project that I do from here on out, each piece of content, each, mu each piece of music, um, I think about her. You know, she's the audience. She's the audience. I love my audience. I love my fans, you know, all across the world. But, you know, I got to make sure that she knows that when she, received it, when she receives this, that each bar, each video, you know, was, was made with love and made with her um, at the forefront. Say I came, I came for the dope shit. Man, THS is that hope shit, man. You know what I'm saying? That was some hope shit right there. Yo, that hope shit? <laughs> that hope shit? That's the shit you need to believe in. That's, that's, it's funny because that's become such a, a mantra, such a, um, a way of life. You know what I'm saying? It started out. Um, when I would do my shows, you know, it's a way to connect with my fans. You know, sometimes I'm on a bill with other artists. And so for me to really discern who is a John Hope fan, you know, I, they'll say that Hope shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and, um, and so we, I just cut it short, you know, it came from a record off my last project, Hope All Is Well. And I called it, I just started saying THS. And THS to start it, you know, it, it was just a way for us to, it's like coded language. And really what it is, is being, you know, committed to yourself, even when there isn't a lot of evidence. You know, when you think about my fans, when you think about my music, it's really a belief first, see later type of mentality. You know what I mean? Like if you believe you could get up out your situation, if you believe you could come up out them trenches, if you believe that you could rise above, you know, the negativity and the bullshit, that's, that's the great place to start. 
So when I say THS, is 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 that hope shit, and and hope in a way that's not romanticized. You know, a lot of times we romanticize these words, love, hope, and all that. For me, it's 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 a ruggedness. It's a it's a reality based hope. Like yeah, you know, acknowledge that you in, acknowledge and accept that you're in a difficult situation, but don't rest there. You know, and don't 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 look at this through rose colored glasses. You know, for me, it's like that hope is like, all right, I'm currently in this situation, but these are the steps. What are the steps? Who are the people that I need to get next to to get out of this situation? And more importantly, how much do I believe in myself to be able to rise above this situation? You know, so that's what THS is. It's that authentic, it's that authentic belief in yourself, you know. Man, there was so many things that really um, come into why Hope All Is Well was such a success. Um, first, you know, everybody was going through a collective experience. I don't care if you was rich, poor, white, black, gay, lesbian, we were all dealing with the pandemic. You know what I mean? Everyone was being affected in one way or another. So I think, um, you know, everything shut down initially. You know, we were all trying to figure out what was happening, especially earlier on in the pandemic. And, you know, with something like that, where the world literally stops, it's easy to fall into a depressed type of state. I think what really connected was this idea of hope, you know, like, yo, how, you know, what, what are we gonna, you know, you needed something to hold on to at least for 35, 40 minutes, you know, I could help you escape, help you feel like there's something on the other side, you know, and I think that was the first thing, you know, was this pandemic that really, you know, got people in a state of vulnerability and they want and they wanted and needed something to get up out of that, you know? You know, the connection was there. There was a, there, you know, whether it was Bluest Moon or whether it was African Boy, whether it was My God, you know, there were so many records on there, you know, where people like, I mean, I had, I had gangsters, I had old people, I had young people all resonating with, with this music. And so what does that tell you? Everybody is looking for something. Everybody is going through it. It doesn't matter where, what your background is. It was a faceless dynamic. It was, it, I wasn't catering to one specific person. All I was catering to was the person who wants to improve their quality of life. That's really what it was. You know what I mean? And that's why you have such a variation. I could do records with Jim Jones. You know, Jim Jones is on there, you know what I mean? And then I got OT The Real, and then I'm working with Bongo By The Way, and you know, C's, and you know, so many different artists, you know what I'm saying? So it was just about realness and trying to connect, you know, trying, trying to improve your quality of life. I wanna get better, you know? So I think like we got to get to a place where we have to look at ourselves, you know, as as a culture, you know, and, and when I when I critique the culture, I'm critiquing from within. I'm not on no high horse. You know, I participate in this just as much as anybody. You know, when I see this trend of young people dying, you know, of just the 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 dismissal of the quality of life. It's like, it's like, yo, we got a problem. You know, what's one thing for Biggie and Pac? The frequency in which people were dying wasn't, um, was much less, right? Now, it seems like in the last two years, you could say just about every other month, someone is dying. You know, someone's getting shot, you know? And so that's the end result. But what about all the shit that we do to get to that point? You know, we dissing the dead. You know, we, we, we talking about pulling up to somebody's block and, you know, spinning the block and, you know, we speaking a lot of death right now, you know what I mean? And <clears throat> it's not even about like being on some positive, like, you know, lighting up candles and, you know, Talib Kweli type shit. It's like, nah, man, I just want to live. I just want to live. You know, I, I value my life. 
you know, a lot of these people, even when they talk them this op shit, they don't even value their life, right? And so, like, we have to look at the culture. No other culture is doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Pop, country, uh, uh, rock and roll, you know, no other artist is having to check in. You know, nobody's getting shot, you know, in a restaurant, you know, Slim 400, Trouble, King Vaughn, Young Dolph, PNB Rock, um, Mo3, you know, these are all guys that are dying before the age of 30. That shit ain't cool. Like, to be quite honest, man, I ain't trying to say long live anymore or free this one. You know, and those are the more, you know, notable uh, situations, but niggas is dying all the time. And so we got to understand that this shit isn't normal. You know, I know we come from them trenches. I know we come from that bottom, but this shit ain't normal, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have to take a look at ourselves. We have to reevaluate what it means to be a real nigga. Because if being real means going to jail and dying, I'm not real. You know, I'm not real. <laughs> Straight like that. Man, I, li I, I live life. I live life. Life is the biggest motivating factor, you know. Um, I'm always having new experiences, you know, and so those new experiences, I want to I want to share them with the world. You know, I want to share them. I want to put it out um, and I rap. I still rap at a high level. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm just getting started. It's crazy because when I think back about my music and when I think about all the pr projects that I put out, you know, I always operated from an insecure place. I was operating from this place of seeking validation and not thinking I was good enough or trying to get on. It was from this insecure place. And now it's like, shit, if I gave you all of that, you know, and I wasn't my fullest self, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited for what's to come because right now I'm that nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm the one. Like, I'm one of the greatest artists of all time. I'm one, I influence my city. I influence my people. You know, people look to me, people hear my voice. And I've, I, had, I, had such a, I had such a hard time grappling with that. You know what I mean? Because I was like under some false toxic uh, sense of humility, thinking that being humble mean I had to like, you know, self edit and, and, and cower and lower myself and, and lower myself. You know, for me now, it's like, yo, I walk in a room with supreme confidence knowing that I'm one, of the, I'm one of them ones, you know what I mean? And it exudes, you know, that's why you're attracted to this, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I think like, that's what's motivating me. Like, if I gave you all this catalog from an insecure place, from a vulnerable place, imagine what I could do when I'm extremely confident and knowing that I'm John Hope. Man, I've been through so much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a foster kid. You know, I seen death at an early age. I've been beat by police. You know, um, I've, I've been betrayed. I've, I've, you know, been let down by some of the closest people, you know, and everything that I've been through and more. You know, I've cried a lot of tears, you know what I'm saying? Um, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, you know, so if I'm here in front of you with you looking like this and feeling like this, you know, really, you know, tapping into myself, you know, then, then that means that, you know, every single instance, every experience, every step of the way was a necessary ingredient. You know, um, we tend to think that failure and success are mutually exclusive. And nah, man, like. I had to fail, I had to fall in order to get to this place. So nah, I don't regret anything, you know? Everything that I've been through was supposed to happen. Everything that I've been through, everything that I went through was, was brought me here to, to, to today in front of you. So um, no, I have zero regrets, man. I, 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 I look back and I'm thankful. I'm grateful, actually, I'm grateful. Man, my goal is just to grow. My goal is to grow. My goal is, is to grow my company, you know, continue to put out music, helping others, 
um, you know, reach their fullest potential, impact the community. You know, it's less about me at this at this stage in my life, you know, um, and just become a better person, a better artist, a better person. You know, that's really what it is, man. And in this time that we're living in right now, pandemic, monkey pox, you know, niggas dying, you know, like just so much negativity, man. We really need this. Like we really need like an outlook that's a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more lively. You know, we need this. Like it's okay to smile. You know, it's okay to look good. It's okay to, you know, um, embrace somebody, you know what I'm saying? Just to have value. You know, I think that's what it is. We don't have any more value anymore, you know? Man, Zane Butler is one of those premier companies, man. You know, I don't even consider it a company, more or less um, a vehicle. You know, Zane Butler is an outlet. Um, like I mentioned, you know, I wanna, I wanna be able to tell stories and I've been telling my story through Zane Butler. You know, whether it's through merch, whether it's through the music, multimedia, um, you know, it's just, it's just this idea that when I think about Zane Butler, it's redirection. You know, a lot of brands, a lot of companies, they give you this false pretense that you have to buy this product in order to become better or that you have to put on this shirt or that you got to listen to this in order to become better. No matter what we do as a company, it's all about redirecting to back to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So whatever I put out, it's a vehicle to get back to discover yourself. Cause we get so much messaging and so much, um, you know, society will tell you that, yo, you need to do this in order to be on or, or need to, you know, sign up for this in order to be the, the, the best version of yourself. And really what we do is just have a level of value of self man you know what i mean like it's really about a redirection we're saying yo listen to this because this is going to bring you back to yourself and know that whatever you need to do it starts with you it starts with you we're just the vehicle we're just the buffer we're just the buffer to say oh you know what yeah you trying to do x y and z but you know it really starts with you so i look at it less than i look at it less uh, as a company and more of a vehicle. And that vehicle, what it looks like is myself. Um, I'm working with another artist by the name of Tony T, beautiful singer songwriter who's amazing. And she's telling her story, you know what I mean? And, um, and you know, the merch, um, you know, I've decided to, you know, upgrade from a merchandise to a lifestyle brand that is Hope Signature Collection. You know, and so it's just about inspired cloth. Again, you put on the cloth, you put on that hope shit and you're going to feel inspired, inspired to, you know, to be better. So, again, man, no matter what the medium is, you know, um, I think it's all about redirection to who you are and who you're meant to be. Man, because I'm there. Nah. Nah, I think, I think, man, when, when I look back and I think about that, that type of range, right? Jim Jones, Millie's, um, you know, being the arena host at, for PC, um, uh, working with Bongo, um, working with Diddy, you know, in his campaign. And um, I think the commonality amongst all those experiences is being authentic, man. You know what I mean? We may not have the same experiences, but you can relate to someone who's being honest, brutally honest, and stands in their truth. That cuts through anything, you know what I mean? That cuts through anything. I'm somebody who is willing to stand in my truth regardless if it's popular. And a lot of people aren't, you know, willing to do that. There's so much at stake. You know, and maybe that's why to some people they'll be like, oh, man, it took you longer to succeed. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in tune and I appreciate every step of the way because I was my most authentic self. I was being me. So whether I lost or won, I'm myself and not a lot of people can do that. You know, so I think in all those in every single experience of my career, it's always been about authenticity being a true individual, 
and being original with my thoughts, regardless of whatever ha whatever's happening. I don't care whatever the trend is, whatever, I'm gonna move accordingly. And that builds trust. And when you think about John Hope, that's a brand you could trust. That's a person you could trust. That's an artist you can trust. You, you know that it's always, no matter what's going on in the culture, not, no matter what's going on in the music industry, you know that you, what you're gonna get with John Hope. I can remember like when I first started out passing out my CDs and shit like that, and people would say like, you know, I was, I was waving that flag. This is like around the, the, the blog era, you know, and this is a time when there weren't a lot of artists coming out of Providence. It just wasn't, you know what I mean? On a national level, you know? Um, and there was this like intrigue. Um, and uh, there was also this like soft resistance, you know, and not in a, in a negative way, but people didn't really know if it was viable or if it was, you know, if it was viable to say you were from Providence. There were artists that were from Providence, born and raised, but they would say they're from New York because it sounded cool. Or they would put in their bio three hours north of New York, you know what I'm saying? And I was, I was repping, I was repping. I was the only one repping, like, you know, waving that flag. So to see, to come from that to where it's at now, the way we're impacting culture, and not just in a musical sense, but like literally like sports, you know, you have, you know, Coach Ed Cooley, who's from the, who's from the turf, you know, uh, someone who won the coach of the year on a national scale from Providence. He's from the Ville, not just Providence, like from the Ville, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's inspiring. You got David Duke in the NBA, you know, doing his thing, playing alongside Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. You know, that's inspiration. You can see them now. You know, you can go, you can touch them. It's the, the accessibility. We got people that are in the Major League Baseball. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got people that, you know, Kitty that plays in the NFL. You know what I mean? Straight from the turf. You know, so there's so many different arenas. Now it's not just, it's, we're normalizing the greatness of Providence. We're normalizing the greatness of PVD. This isn't just a one-off, you know what I mean? Like you can look and see our, our imprint, you know, from a cultural standpoint. And that's amazing, you know, to be able to have that, man, you know? Oh my gosh, I think, I think, I think it's gonna be even more. I think we're, we're gonna have even more people in different, um, we're gonna have actors, actresses, we're gonna have um, doctors, lawyers that are really going to impact the globe. And not only just impact the globe, but wear the Providence badge. They're going to ask, where are you from? And they're gonna say, I'm from PVD. I'm from Providence, right? Like, it's not just like, oh, by the way. It's like, they're gonna wear that. You know what I'm saying? When we see Viola Davis, she says, I'm from the crib. I'm from Rhode Island, you know what I'm saying? So like, for me, it's like, it's one thing, it's not just about the successes of these people, but the fact that they own where they're from. So now we're gonna have a bunch of young people that are gonna be so inspired and not afraid to say that I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, or I'm from Rhode Island, period. You know what I mean? Because there was a time when people thought they had to move. They thought they had to move in order to be successful. Now you can be here, be from here, put the work in, of course. I see a, a just a, an evolution, a continuation of the greatness that's PVD. I think we're gonna see more people in different spaces, not just entertainment based, that are gonna be like, yeah, I'm from, I'm from the crib, I'm from 401. Like, and people not look at them crazy, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's gonna be like, oh, okay, word, that's what's up. It's gonna be synonymous with Atlanta, New York, LA, Chicago, you know, Houston, when you say Providence. It already is, so it's just gonna grow more, you know what I'm saying? For me, I, I, I want to continue to grow, but um, I want to develop infrastructure for where I, from where I come from. You know, I want, we were talking, you know, about, about young people. I want young people to know that there is a system 
there is a place you can go. There are people you can talk to. There are things that you can do direct from Rhode Island, you know, that can, Im that, that can allow you to have a worldwide impact. It's really about a system. Like I want, I want a building, like there's gotta be a building where creatives can go to and, um, and, and you know, not feel like finances are in the way, not feel like, oh, because I don't have money, you know what I mean? Or I don't know this person, I can't really get on or I can't reach my goal. So for me, it's about developing more infrastructure, you know, um, where we're, we're really a creative hub for everyone. Cause I think right now what we're seeing is like, people are like, yeah, this is the creative capital. Yeah, we got RISD. Yeah, we got all these things. But I think the access, it doesn't really trickle down to the underrepresented, you know, those people from the bottom where I come from. And I don't feel there should be just one or a few people that have access to that. You know, I want, I want everyone. You know what I'm saying? And when I say, you know, I, I want people from Chad Brown, I want Lockwood, Manton, Ville, you know what I'm saying? Arbor Glen, um, you know, South Side, East Side, West End. Like, I want people that come from that community to feel like they can be successful and they, can, they, and they know the steps that they need to do. And until we reach those people, we, got, we still got a job to do. Yo, what's going on? It's the kid, John Hope. I just want to say thank you for sticking by my side, for tuning in. It's always a pleasure when I connect with you. Stay tuned. We got more Hope shit coming your way. Yeah, straight like that.